Welcome everybody. My name is Jason and I'm a librarian for the San Francisco Public Library. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so happy you are here with us to celebrate Reaving Stories, SFPL celebration of Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month with Mel Veracruz. I'm gonna start with the land acknowledgement. We are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco P Peninsula and continue to live, work, and play here today. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community and by affirming their sovereign rights as First Peoples. This event is part of our Weaving Stories, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month program series in which we celebrate the variety and vastness of history, culture, and heritage. A celebration that should take place not only during May, but all year round. Thank you for joining us to continue understanding, respecting, and celebrating the diverse AANHPI heritages from San Francisco and beyond. Um, check out the AANHPI web, webpage of San Francisco Public Library to see our upcoming events, find great books by AANHPI authors and illustrators, and more. And we'd like to thank the friends of SFPL for their generous, generous support of this entire program series. We couldn't do this without them. Let me introduce Mal Vera Cruz, our feature artist for Weaving Stories, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Mal is a local artist who worked in partnership with the library to produce a stunning piece, which I will show you. This centerpiece is this centerpiece painting features a bouquet of flowers that have symbolic ties to AA and HPI cultures, including chrysanthemums, cherry blossoms, hibiscus, plumerias, and others. It symbolizes rejuvenation, resilience, and vitality. It is created with stencils, acrylic paint, and spray paint on fiberglass. And the art will be exhibit, exhibited to view in person on the third floor of the main library, along with the banner on Grove Street. Mal Veracruz is a multimedia artist. He migrated to the U.S. from the Philippines in 1995 and is based in the Bay Area. With a background in graphic design and advertising, he incorporates painting and screen printing techniques along with use of readily available materials. His work has been shown in solo and group shows throughout the Bay Area as well as Manila. Mal created two videos showing his art process, and he'd like to share a little bit more about that. Hello guys, uh, I'm Mel <clears throat> Vera Cruz, and <clears throat> I'm so happy to be here and uh, show you my uh, artworks. So, uh, you know, I, I, I dreamed of, uh, you know, uh, something when I was young, I dreamed of something that I can do until <clears throat> I'm in my deathbed. And I thought of art, so that's why I became an artist. So I've been drawing, like all kids, I've been drawing before I can write. But the difference is that uh, I never stop. So until now, I, so uh, we can move on to the stem seals. Uh, I love printing ever since. Uh, when I was in high school, I don't have a financial, you know, I'm not financially, uh, I don't have money basically. So <clears throat> I love graphics and I love the contrast of uh, images. So I cannot tell you why, it's just instinct for me. So, uh, the stencils are, uh, <clears throat> you don't need the high tech materials. So you just have to have a exacto knife and a cardboard. 
and you you're off you can do whatever you want so and it's also a coincidence that uh, my first job after college was uh, a stencil uh, cutter on a glass etching uh, company so yeah here's uh, how i i do my stencils so um, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the um, video presentations. And if you have any questions, please add them to the chat, and Mel will be here later to answer them.
Wow, Mel, that was amazing getting to watch your um, process in action. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed um, watching that as much as I did. That was amazing. I, not very artistic, but I feel like I want to go out and try that now. Um, it looks like we might have some questions. Are you ready to answer some questions from our viewers? Yeah. Awesome. So let's start with, are there places that you visit that inspire your art? Um, I'm not much of a traveler, but uh, maybe sometime later in my life. But when I go to the Philippines, it always inspires me because, <clears throat> you know, everywhere you look, there's a subject, there's a story. So, uh, yeah, when I go to the Philippines, I always get, get inspired. And uh, also, when, when I go to artists, uh, friends and we hang out and we always talk about art like art talk and uh, brainstorming so <clears throat> sometimes that's where I get my ideas and I love looking at nature where, whenever I can and uh, sometimes I go to galleries and museums and get inspired and, you know, just sometimes I just watch TV and uh, YouTube. I watch uh, artists that I like. So I get inspired by them. So I also have uh, periods. Like uh, I had an impressionist period, uh, uh, cubist period. So <clears throat> those things uh, inspired me. And uh, yeah, uh, Western culture, I was uh, very much inspired by it because they teach uh, European art during my college in, uh, in the Philippines. But uh, the artists that, uh, you know, uh, opened the doors for me was Santi Bossi. So he's the one who encouraged me to dig deeper deeper in my uh, self my of who i am so <clears throat> those are the things that's in, that in, inspires me thank you that kind of answered one of the questions of who has helped you realize your journey so um, uh, unless there was other people that really helped you realize your journey as an artist yeah uh, besides my family uh, I was really stoked when uh, I, I transferred to a school in, uh, because I, I was uh, in high school. I was in a, a private school and they don't have an art program. <clears throat> so when I got transferred to the public school in the Philippines, they have a graphic arts elective and uh, I chose that right away. And <clears throat> I was so happy because I felt like I was already working. <laughs> So even if our uh, room was dilapidated, when it's raining, water dripping everywhere. <laughs> but I was so content during the time because I, I, I was doing what I love. So that was high school. And then uh, college, of course, I was dead set on uh, taking up fine arts no matter what. So <clears throat> During college, I really enjoyed that uh, part of my life and that helped me develop. And uh, after college, I worked in an ad agency for nine years as an illustrator, graphic designer. So that helped me a lot. Uh, experience, uh, I won awards and that uh, helped me a lot to be confident. <clears throat> and then uh you know uh when i when i migrated here in uh the united states my my target was to work in the ad agency but did not that did not happen because of uh you know <clears throat> my priorities are uh my family first and then uh, <clears throat> the culture is so different i was culture shocked but uh, I don't know, it's accidental also because I applied for a job in a, a work 
agency, employment agency, and they sent me to a printing shop uh, where they do CD printing, silk screen, and that's like a, it's a, like a coins. Uh, I I don't want to say coincidence because it's everything happens for a reason. I believe. So that's when I started being a printer, like a professionally. <clears throat> so I learned a lot about silk screen printing. So, uh, and of course, networking. Uh, you have to, I have to find my tribe, my friends who are also artists. <clears throat> so we, we feed off uh, with each other and uh, we inspire each other. And <clears throat> uh, one thing that really helped me, I think, is uh, being having a tough mind. I may be weak physically, but uh, I have a very tough mind. I, I don't get swayed easily. Once I decided on something, I go for it 100%. So, I think those are the things that uh, helped me realize my passion. Well, we're very happy for that because we got you at San Francisco Library. <laughs> so I'm it's so just, happy. It, gave, it got you here. Um, we do Thank have a you. question in the chat. Um, let me see. It's um, where can we purchase your art, or where can we support you as an artist? Uh, I don't have a representation. So you can contact me directly, email or text or Facebook. So. And I think we might be able to put that in the chat. I'm not sure, um, but we will find a way to get that information to our viewers. Okay. Um, looking at some more questions. What would you tell someone who is interested in making art? Uh, <clears throat> Believe in yourself. Uh, be one track minded <laughs> because, uh, you know, once you stop, that's the end of it. So I never stopped. And, uh, you know, when you do art, there's always a competition. So don't be bothered by that. So there will always be someone better. So my, my goal was to be different, not perfect. So uh, it's like a mind over matter. So you have to, like what I said, you have to have a tough mind not to get swayed. So don't, I don't follow tradition. Copying is okay at first, but you get tired of it. So, uh, I search inside and uh, know myself. And uh, anything can be your medium. So it's not just uh, things that you can buy in an uh, art store. Those are very expensive, by the way. So I buy mine in a uh, Home Depot. And I try not to use the uh, expensive stuff because uh, <clears throat> I want to do it right away. So practice is uh, very important. And I think the best uh, advice for me is experience. So you have to live your life because that's where you'll get your inspiration. So yeah. I think that's it. Very wise words. Um, let's see, do you listen to music when you create your pieces? You know, I love rock and roll. When I was uh, younger, <laughs> I used to hate jazz. <laughs> but, uh, you know, music was always blaring in our art department. In, uh, when I used to work in an ad agency. But when I, I matured, I changed my taste. I think it's like an acquired taste. I listen to jazz. 
uh, all the time when I work and I love bebop. So it's like a, a mind stimulant for me. So it's not made for dancing. It's like makes you think. But also, I think be uh, quiet is very important too, because when you're when everything's quiet, you're more concentrated. <clears throat> so yes, but I listen to music when uh, I feel relaxed and I'm not pressured. Yes. Well, I like jazz myself, so <laughs> it's um, pretty great. Um, do we have any more? Is there anything else you'd like to share about your upcoming work? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, uh, I used to dream showing in New York and uh, France, all those uh, cliches, <clears throat> but uh, that did not happen. So I changed my target. And now uh, I was chosen as uh, one of the artists to design a pavement in the uh, Mina Natoma Art uh, Corridor Project. And that's uh, way beyond my expectations because it's, uh, <clears throat> it's on a pavement. So that's one. And uh, you know the demo I did, <clears throat> the demonstration paintings, is uh, going to be shown in a museum in the Philippines. Uh, that's the uh, two paintings. So I made it uh, like I hit two birds in one stone, <laughs> one for the demo and one for the submission in uh, the museum in the Philippines. So that's the, another thing. So for me, everything happens for a reason. It's, it's relevant, like... Uh, for example, I worked as a, I told you already that I, I worked, I like to work in an ad agency, but the printing uh, work happened. And now I'm a real printer. I'm a professional printer. So, and uh, like uh, another example is, when I used to be, uh, when I was laid off and being a printer, I worked as a dental assistant and I hated that job because, you know, it's not my forte, but I learned it. And after that, I was uh, hired as a, a tattoo flash artist. And then my boss said, hey, you should uh, learn how to tattoo. So I learned it and dental assisting is relevant to tattooing because the, uh, what do you call this? The clean, cleanliness of the tools. So I, I don't have to learn that. So it's connected. So, you know, sometimes, so don't be discouraged when you, you feel that you're out of your element because I think everything is relevant. It's just up to you to figure it out. So. But well, you're a tattoo artist too. Yeah. You do tattoos. Uh -huh. <laughs> like where can well, we get I'll, one of those? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do it in my home only because <laughs> I, I, I like my, I work as a graphic designer at Caltrans and it has more benefits. So I don't want to waste that. So if you're in a shop, you have to uh, pay for your own insurance and everything, retirement. So I chose to be uh, as a graphic designer and I can do my tattoo any weekends. So. And uh, <clears throat> one last thing is that I'm so amused that uh, my works are mainly outside galleries and, uh, you know, it's in the streets, like the billboard you, you made uh, <laughs> outside of the library. And I also have uh, 
uh, utility boxes spread all over Soma, Pilipinas. So it's like very, it's not very, it's a different kind of satisfaction because I don't have galleries. I, my works are not in museums, but it's outside. So, uh, there's lots of avenues. It's not only going to school, having gallery presentations. So <clears throat> there's a lot of avenues. Seems like it makes it more accessible to more people. If Thank that, you. Yes. Not having it in galleries. Not everyone knows about I, galleries or wants to go to them. I so. forgot to say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, well, thank you, Mo, for sharing your um, wonderful skills, your talent with us, and your time. It's much appreciated. Um, just want to know if there's any words of farewell or anything else you'd like to say to people watching. I just want to say thank you guys for having me and uh, giving me this experience and exposure. So I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. We appreciate you too. We're very excited about having your art here to celebrate Thank our you. month. You're welcome. So I guess that's all for today, everybody. Um, check out um, our calendar for more programs in our Weaving Stories series. We have them both online and in person. Take good care of yourselves, stay safe, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank Bye, you everyone. guys. Bye.